All right, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Tuesday. We are back again for another great Lunch and Learn. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are just now joining us, if you're just now catching the replay, make sure you go ahead and type replay down in the comments uh, so that we know uh, that you are watching with us. My name is Stephanie Rollins. I am one of the uh, executive coaches for the TSP Mastermind. Shout out to the Mastermind members who are popping on right now. Um, and here at TSP, we're all about uh, driving more traffic to your website, converting more sales, and increasing the amount of profit in your business. So if you are a part of the community and you have a friend who needs to be in the community, please make sure that you are sharing out this video. We have an amazing, amazing, amazing lunch and learn for you today. Um, and just in general, the group is a just a cesspool of information, right? Of, for entrepreneurs, budding entrepreneurs, authors, speakers, coaches, bloggers, all of that good stuff. So please make sure that you are sharing this out um, so that we can start spreading this knowledge amongst the African-American entrepreneur community. So thank you again for joining us today. Um, I'm gonna... Um, pop in and check in on the comments to see who's joining us. But if you are popping on right now, make sure that you are dropping your name, your business name, and then also your location so that you guys can mix and mingle and network with one another after the Lunch and Learn is over. So we have a great guest today. Um, I'm gonna start off by introducing him as the official, the official event designer for all of our TSP events. He doesn't like to say this for some reason, <laughs> but he is our official graphic designer for TSP Game Plan, TSP Live, all of our big TSP events. We have our official graphic designer on with us today. So we have Chris Richards, and I'm going to introduce him really quickly. So uh, let's see. So create something compelling from a box with specific contents that have a predetermined set of rules. That is how Chris Richards describes his approach to design. Whether in web or on print, starting with the box that is his client's brand identity and imaging, he challenges creative constructs while keeping user experience and brand integrity as core priorities. Drawing on his unique blend of artistry and function, Chris helps people keep ideas visually engaging while maintaining his client's brand standards. Event branding, again, he's our official TSP event designer product brand design, brand analysis, and guided restructuring and standout web design are Chris's main zones. And he is particularly interested in creative projects with a known problem solving component. The proud Jamaican and avid footballer is also a visual artist who enjoys how art meets problem solving on canvas. So that was a mouthful, but Chris is a very, <laughs> he's an intellectual person in addition to being an amazing graphic designer. Chris, how are you today? I'm good, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. So glad to have you on. Yes, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, guys, really quick. Um, again, we have Chris Richards on if you're just popping on. Um, he's the official uh, designer for all things TSP events. Um, so he's going to be talking about how to get the most out of your designer. We know a lot of you guys um, are either designing things yourselves or you are uh, working with other people. Um, so we're gonna give you some really amazing tips uh, today to kind of help you make sure that you're getting the results that you actually want for your business. So Chris, can you tell us really quickly, how did you get started with graphic design? Um, you've been with TSP and actually BMWK for some years now, I think since 2012, 2013. Sounds about right, yeah. I've been with yeah. for a minute. Yeah. And so why is this so important to you? Um, and why is this important for you to kind of educate people in the community about this particular topic? Okay. Well, um, I got into graphic design kind of by necessity. Um, I, I went to school originally um, at Florida State University for marketing. Um, but while I was there, I was, you know, the hungry student and I needed to make some money. Um, I was always um, artistic. So um, I, I got involved with a lot of student unions by, by creating their flyers, flyers for parties and things like that. Um, and I would draw them. I would have a, a character that I would draw and um, kind of put the flyer together and give it for, for the unions to copy and create flyers from. After a while, I realized it was becoming a bit too, um, was taking too long. So I decided that I would teach myself Photoshop, downloaded Photoshop and just spent whatever waking moments I had learning how to play around in Photoshop. And long story short, after a long time of doing that and 
you know, having little odd jobs here and there where I was able to kind of get the gather knowledge from people that were already doing it. Um, graduated college with my degree, got out into the workforce and realized the only job that I can get with the, my degree was being a salesperson. And that's not the yeah. type of person I am. I'm, I'm not yeah. a sales person like that. Um, so I ended up finding a job as a, like a production artist um, at Brandsmart USA in Florida. Um, and from there, you know, I just kind of stuck with it. I, 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 I used the, the marketing aspect of what I learned to kind of tie in my graphic with what the account execs needed. So I got kind of good at, at kind of playing on the, the fence in that sense. Moved to Atlanta and got a job at a real estate marketing agency. Um, and that's actually where I, I learned, where I learned most of my brand awareness and, and mm. really dove in. At that agency, we, we started from literally from uh, a client download. The client would say, oh, this is the property that we're looking to build. These are the people that we're, we're gearing it towards. This is the price point. This is the area. This is what the area is known for. And with that bit of information, we had to go out, go visit the site, research the area, kind of get, get an idea of how we wanted to develop that property um, brand-wise and just take it from there. We had to flush out the logo, the colors, the, the, we had to do a brand board that had textures and emotions, all these things, all these different components that come into play when you start talking about a person's brand. We had to develop that from scratch. And, you know, it's an agency environment, so we're just churning them out. Um, and that's kind of where I fell in love um, because I, I like the, the, artist, the artistic side of it, but I also appreciated the, how the rules were set. It was very specific about maintaining your brand standards and, and keeping things clean and making, making it really easy for someone that's viewing the brand or experiencing the brand to be able to tell who it is right away and to also see the respect that comes with, you know, making sure that your brand standards are upheld. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I've just been going and in, doing in different projects and learning different things, just like anybody else in any other industry. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that with us, especially the part about like talking about the different emotions behind the brand and things like that. Like when you think of, you know, creating a logo or just creating a brand, I feel like a lot of people don't think about, they don't think that deeply, right? It's just kind of surface right. level things, you know, what do we want it to look like? Um, what's the aesthetic, um, but not the feelings and things like that. So I love that. Um, I'm just going to shout out a couple of people who are on the live with us. Hey, Angela. Hey, Tamiza. Hey, Miss Nancy. Hey, Judith. Hey, Bobby. Uh, let's see who else we got. Hey, hey, Andrea. I see you're on. I see Grace is on. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, and hey, Jennifer. I see you're on too. Um, okay, Judith. Great. Your audio is good. So we're good to go. All right, so I'm not gonna hold this up any longer. Let's go ahead and dive into the nugget. So again, guys, uh, my name is Stephanie Rollins. I'm one of the TSP executive coaches for the TSP Mastermind. And we are here today with Chris Richards. Um, he is of RFP Creative, but he is also the official graphic designer for all TSP events. So um, he's official official. <laughs> so we're glad to have him on today. And we're gonna be talking about how to get the most out of your designer. So Chris, um, why don't you go ahead and um, dive into your first talking point? Sure. Um, so. Um, a lot of times when people that um, realize that they want to engage with their designer, they, they come to them with the expectation that, okay, I'm, I'm dealing with someone creative. So all I need to do is kind of just plop my idea down and they'll figure it out. They'll make it beautiful. They'll make it exciting. They'll make it everything that I could ever want and more. And if they don't do that, then they're a garbage designer and I just need to move on until I find the right person. Sometimes that's true. I, I can't lie. Sometimes that's true, but sometimes it's it's also like a user error. Sometimes sometimes you don't give enough. Sometimes the, the designer doesn't have an idea of what it is that you're trying to convey. They don't have an idea of what emotions. Well, let me back up. Um, when dealing with anything that has to do with visual and art, it's my, my experience that when you, when you try and create something without emotion, 
most people can can kind of see it and feel it right away. They, they see it as dry. They don't see it as exciting. They want to use terms like make it pop. Pop isn't an, like it, it doesn't help a designer, by the way. Never say that about making it pop. But the idea behind making it pop is the important thing. The, the, you're looking for some level of emotion, excitement. Um, maybe even depending on what it's being used for, something that kind of brings up fears or, or seems scary or, you know, it, it really is an important part of, of delivering your message. How do you want that message to be received? Is it a kind of funny? Is it lively? Is it these type of things are important because these are the things that people remember when they see your brand. When, when we see something like an Apple, yes, we know the brand, the, the equipment that, that Apple promotes and the things that they do, but be very, be very careful when you, you, you watch the things that Apple produces, look at their print ads, their, their videos, look at, they're all very similar. They all speak about excitement, youth, innovation. These are the things that they keep driving, the points that they drive home every time. It comes in the, the music set that's playing in the background. It comes with the images that they use. A simple image of a, a computer flat straight on isn't very exciting and isn't very interesting. Go to apple.com and look at how they, they present their um, products. They all are like dynamic angles. You're looking up at something that's supposedly like this gargantuan thing, but it's really just a small laptop. They, they make sure to capture light and dark and kind of play with your, the things that you, you feel when you watch like a movie. The same feelings that you get when you get, you, it's like a, a scary scene. The lights are dim. The, the music is kind of staccato. It isn't always, you're not really sure what exactly is going on. That kind of experience doesn't just stay in movies. Like it, it, it exists all across media. For a specific reason that people are motivated by their emotions and not so much by you know the 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 presentation as such a part of that is definitely your emotion so these are some of the things that we you know you, you need to make sure that you incorporate when you're dealing with your designer let them know what it is that you're you're trying to bring across who are the people that you're talking to um how how are they supposed to feel after they read this what is the next step for them you know, th these are, these are like, um, it's, it's kind of like talking out your thoughts mm. and, and not expecting someone else to kind of read your mind. You got to talk these things out. So everybody's on the same page. Does that help? Absolutely. That's very helpful. And, um, it just kind of reminds me of how I see a lot of people dealing with designers as well. I'm definitely guilty. I'm pretty sure we all are, but you know, you do kind of try to cut corners so that you can you know, just kind of hurry up and submit the graphic or submit the image that you need and get it over to the designer. Right. But when you're not presenting that clear picture, it's very obvious when the work gets back. <laughs> you know, if there are no exchanges, you know, by chance, like there, it's very obvious that, hey, maybe we didn't talk this through enough. So that was definitely helpful. Um, let me just pop in the comments really quick. And if you guys have questions, make sure that you're dropping them in the comments so that we can um, have Chris answer them later on. So um, Judith says that she's happy to hear your nuggets. Um, I can tell Chris is about to have a word for us today. Yes. Akila said, I've been guilty of going to my designer with no clarity, but plenty of grand ideas. Yes. Mm. Um, Sounds familiar. <laughs> I wasn't going to say nothing, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Judith said, LOL, never say pop to your designer. Um, yes, yeah. because design is emotional as well as strategic. And that's actually another thing that I'm glad you brought up because again, when we're talking about marketing and sales, like a big part of that is where the customer is emotionally, right? So mm -hmm. where not everybody is going to be on the same journey and they're not going to always feel a, the same way when they're purchasing your product. And you have to think about those things when you're thinking about your marketing right. strategy and you're thinking about, you know, how you're going to talk to that specific person. So I totally love that you brought that up. Uh, let's see. Hey, Shanika, thank you for hopping on. Akila said, LOL. I'm guessing that's, <laughs> that's your earlier comment. <laughs> All right, Chris, let's go ahead and keep it moving. Go ahead and dive into your second talking point uh, for us when it comes to just getting the most out of your designer. Okay, so do um, you remind me what that, that second question was? So the first one was be prepared. Mm -hmm. Second is be clear slash be simple. Right. Or we can being move clear on to the and next being simple. So, oh, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. Go ahead. All right. So, so being clear go and ahead. being simple. So, this, 
I guess it it is something that you know most people skip over when they they're talking to their designer, but it's also something that's very important across the board, just in terms of marketing alone. Marketing in and of itself, it's important that you're clear and concise. People need to know exactly what it is that you're talking to them about and what you're trying to say. The flowery words um, actually kind of convolute the message. People don't quite know where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens in design. It, you, if you, you add too many elements, too many bits and pieces, too many um, ideas, you're trying to bring across too many ideas at one time, it gets messy and it, it, it shows itself in design. You, you, and you've probably seen these type of designs. You've seen things where there's pictures that are sitting together with a message that don't quite match. It doesn't quite make sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you that, that impetus to kind of step forward and say, okay, now I want to take this course or now I want to buy that product. You're kind of just confused. You're not, you're not sure what the next step is. Um, that, that across, I think, I think that's one of those things that you can, you can use it in anywhere in business and earning com communication. It's a communication thing. It's not even necessarily a business thing. It's a communication thing. It's when, when someone is clear about where, where you're coming from and what you're saying, it's kind of easier to, to, to use that as a jumping board and say, okay, now that we have the clear idea of what we're going to create and what we're trying to say, now we can get fancy. Now, now since we, we settled that down, we can get fancy and do the other little things like, oh, I want to I wanna kind of tease this next product that's coming down the line in this ad. I can do that in this little corner here because the rest of my design is so clear and so straightforward that everything is where it needs to be. And I have enough white space to where all the elements are telling a narrative. I don't have a bunch of, um, what's the term, clutter. Mm -hmm. I don't have a bunch of clutter yeah. with my text and my images and my icons and social media icons or whatever, all in one big ball of mess that you're asking the viewer to now kind of decipher. And not only decipher, but decide that and now after doing all that work, I want to do some more work and buy something from you. It's a bit much. Yeah. It's a bit much. So when you keep things simple, it's it. in my experience, I found with my clients, kind of talking things through and simplifying things actually helps them decide if, if this is actually the right route for them. I've, I've, I've had clients, I've had clients rethink complete strategies just based on conversations about a Facebook ad or, uh, or, uh, um, what do they call them? A, a web banner ad, a web banner, just creating a web banner. And, and me asking the simple question is like, what exactly are you trying to say? Like what, what it, I get what you're trying to sell, but what are you trying to say? That kind of really hard look at what it is, your messages and how clear your messages and how straightforward your messages. I think a lot of people get away with, with having, a lot of people get away with having nice words and pretty images and, and not so much a good design or yeah. a, a useful design, a functional design. Mm. And all of that comes from being clear and concise with your messages, which leads to a clear and concise design. Awesome. And that totally makes sense. Um... So Angela says, do you prefer to have your customers send you inspiration images when trying to give the visual on the desired design? Or would you prefer to give them something from scratch based on where you think the brand design should flow? Oh, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely, I'm a, I'm a full, full ag agreement in full agreement with having things that connect for you. That's term in terms of a client, mm -hmm. having things that connect for you and say, this is the feeling I'm going for with my design. This is, this is the color scheme even, or this is the look I'm, I'm going for my design. Those type of things are helpful because it's not, well, in, in, in my field, we have a term. We have a term for um, designers that the type of clients that they have really just want them to execute what they, what they give them. So mm -hmm. I'll give you a design over here and say, change the colors, change the, the images or whatever we call those type of people we call those design monkeys the the people that are um it's really just about 
for, it's really just about executing an idea and not so much creation. There's no there's little to no creativity. Um, not too many designers that I know want to be in that field because they're, for the most part, we're creative people. So the idea is really to, to have some sort of collaboration. Tell me, tell me, tell me what it is that you, you're trying to do and I'll use my creativity to get us there in a, in a new and exciting way. That most designers, that's where they're coming from. That's, that's what they're looking to do. But you do have others that, like a production artist. So a production, a production artist is one of those people that typically we just get grunt work. You have, there's like a hierarchy of designers and you have straight from the creative director down to the, the um, art director and you know, straight down to the, the production artist. There's a hierarchy of who gets to use their creativity the most and who gets notarized for that kind of stuff. But at the bottom tier is that person that all they do all day is grind out designs. And it's not really their design. It's really just a design that was created and someone saying, change the copy, change the picture, change. Yeah. There, there's, there's levels to it. So a part of it, I guess, is also knowing that. So you know who and who you need to speak to about what and what kind of how to, to get the best out of which designer you're dealing with. You know, you, you wouldn't bring yeah. a creative problem to a production artist. You, they're just looking for you to give them stuff to churn out. Okay. And conversely, you wouldn't ask what well, you shouldn't ask someone that's like a creative director to ask you to just plop all these things down and say, all I need you to do is change a picture, change the text and send it back. That's not a useful use of their time or yours. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about setting the stage. This is your third um, tip, your third <laughs> nugget. So why don't you go ahead and go into that? Okay. So setting the stage basically means to have your stuff together. Have, if, if you want to hire me to create a billboard, for instance, a, bi a billboard design. Um, yes, a part of my job is to, to ask you the questions about the dimensions. Yes, a part of my job is to contact your vendor, whoever it is that's going to be putting the billboard up to finalize those dimensions and know what format I need to get, the, you know, get you the artwork in. That is part of my job. Um, but it goes a long way in the relationship for, for um, clients to come with everything prepared. You know that I'm going to need these things. And you're, the, the odds are that you're dealing directly with that, that, um, the billboard creator. So they're going to give you, they have that information for you ready already. Just ask for it and get, collect that stuff, get it to the designer. So like being, having, creating, creating that, that little bundle would look like having the dimensions for the, where the artwork is going to be placed, having the copy or the text that's going to be um, in that same artwork, having whatever images you need to get your hands on, having that available, making sure it's high resolution and not blurry, making sure if it's going to be printed, like a physical, physically printed, that the, the images that you're giving me are not less than 300 um, DPI. It's, okay. it's a print worthy image and it's not just something that's supposed to be on the web. Knowing the difference, like these, it comes with time and it comes with experience, but it, it, it also will streamline your process. After a while, you, you'll get into a groove with your designer where they just know, they, they get a sense, like they don't have to worry about those little in particulars about asking you continuously to get me a better image. Can I have the right font? Can I have your brand guide? If, if it's a new designer, can I have your brand guide? What do your colors look like? Can I have the best version of your logo, a vector logo, if it's gonna be print? Um, you can get away with a um, rasterized or a pixelated logo for web, but for print, you know, you're going to need a vector logo so it can scale. Um, yeah, like, so your logo, your, your, your brand guide or your brand style guide, um, whatever dimensions you, the, 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 the artwork is going to be presented in, how it's going to get there. So are they going to be sending the, the artwork to you or are they sending it the finalized one directly to the, the vendor. What's that vendor's information, if that's how you want to handle it. Um, yeah, it's just the bits and pieces so that you can kind of just lay it at your, your designer's feet. Your designer can say, hey, 
here's the here are the the iterations of it what, you know what changes do we want to make okay we we've, we've gone through our rounds of changes it's perfect it's ready to go i already know where to send it because we dealt with this up front i don't have to be hounding you after the fact to get these things done and you have you now have free time to do whatever it is that you need to do you don't have to worry about me all you need to worry about is paying the balance that's it I love that because you know, so, um, when I first started working here at TSP, one of the things that I had to do was I had to manage the process for our graphic designer. And those are all things mm. that I kind of had to learn <laughs> as far as, you know, right. what to give him so that we're getting the correct results back. Um, having the brand guide in place, like all of those things, um, super important, mm -hmm. super important. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, sure. Let me see. Okay. So number four, we're going to talk about the creative versus the designer. Can you go a little bit more yes. into that and tell us what that means? Okay. So um, the creative is a term that I actually heard in that same um, real estate marketing agency. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard it, it was, it was a blanket statement that referred to basically anybody that wasn't an account exec and wasn't in sales. That's, that's how they use the term. So that would include the web designer, that would include the creative director, art director, um, production artists. Yeah, pretty much anybody that wasn't in sales. That's how he defined creative. Um, internally, we define creative as problem solvers. So we're, we're the people that when you come to us and you say, look, I have, I have a billboard that I need to get, we'll stick with billboards. I have a billboard that I need to get designed, but I need, I need it to drive traffic not necessarily to my website, but to X. Here's all the copy that I want to use. Here's the image, blah, blah, blah. Help. A designer will shoot out a bunch of designs that look really good and mm. they, they stay within the brand. The, the, brand, the, the design wise, it's structured very professionally. There's enough spacing. Things are lined up how they need to be lined up. The right logos used the space on the low, all those things look great. It's a great designed piece. That's their job. That's no problem. The yeah. difference with a creative is that a creative would might do the same thing, but they're going to question. They're going to question you along the way because they look at it as a, a problem to solve and not just a thing to get done. So you saying something like, I, this is the, my, my intention for the billboard. A creative would say, well, have you considered maybe not doing a billboard? Why are we stuck on billboard? Mm -hmm. What is it? What is the, the goal? Like, how are you trying to drive this traffic? They, they, they're a bit more involved and more readily accepting of solving a problem mm -hmm. and not just a design problem because you have design problems as well. But a, a, a creative looks at the big picture, but has the benefit of understanding the smaller details of a designer. A designer is pretty much in that small detail and they're not really interested in pushing anywhere past your, what the, the, the creative um, box that you give them. I just wanna, you, you just need, you just need a flyer. Okay, I'll do a flyer. Don't ask me about how to be more impactful with your clients that are blah, 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 blah. Don't ask me those questions because that's not what I'm here for. Um, Got it. But designers are, are more geared towards fixing your problem. They, they, they have a bunch of tools at their, their disposal and experience at their disposal typically. And they're, they're more about solving the problem and less about giving you uh, exactly what you want. They more so will look to give you the thing that you need based on the conversation if that helps. That does, does. And it makes sense. <laughs> it definitely makes sense. Um, hey guys, we are going to, we're wrapping up. Um, we have two more talking points, but um, if you go ahead and drop your um, questions, we're gonna take a couple of questions in just a moment. So please, if you have one, um, go ahead and make sure, sure that you're dropping that now so that I can just scroll up, get to your question and we can get it answered for you. Um, Chris, good. talk to me a little bit about branding basics that the group needs to know. Talk to us a little bit um, about that. What exactly do they need to know and how do they gather that information if, if we're going that direction? Okay, branding basics. Branding basics is respect for your brand. 
it, it, at, the, at the core, it's respect for your brand. It's, it's recognizing that you're not going to put your brand, you're not, well, let's stay with a logo. So for instance, uh, a simple branding basic is that you, you wouldn't take your logo and put your logo very close to any other elements. It should be able to stand on its own visually. When you look at a, a piece, whether it's an ad or it's a, um, it's the flyer, if it's a, a web banner, if it's any of those things, you should immediately be able to zoom in on the, the logo or the brand mark. You should be able to see it and it should sit on its, its own space. It, there should be a, a, a box of emptiness around it so that visually the narrative, you, you can be pulled into the narrative based on where that, that logo is. That's, that's, I guess, one of my, the, the largest issues I've seen, particularly with um, kind of armchair designers, is they don't have a, a full understanding of spacing and alignment. So you'll have, they'll have their logo and then they'll have the, maybe an offer or uh, a title mm -hmm. running right beside their logo. Visually, you might be like, oh, it's no problem. You know, everything fit and people can read it and they do their thing. But um, a designer's job is to help you use graphics and, and uh, um, the text to kind of create a narrative. You're telling a story. Every time someone interacts with any pieces of your, your um, brand materials, you're telling a story. Um, how good the story is depends a lot on the content. How well the story reads depends a lot on the design. Um, so going back to that, that part with the logo, if you have the logo and the text running alongside it at a glance, someone doesn't know if that, that title that runs alongside it is the actual, is actually a part of the logo that's confusing. So now when you see it somewhere else, you don't, you might not recognize it right away because you haven't given the proper respect to your brand. You haven't given people the space to recognize, oh, this is a Apple brand. Oh, this is a, this is a TSP brand. I, Let's start there. This is, these are the people that I'm listening to right now. What do you have to say? Instead of, you know, going the other route where kind of everything is thrown in there and you're left to kind of pick things apart. Well, I think that's their logo, but I'm not sure if that's a sponsor. I think that's the header, but I'm not sure because it's the same weight that they did for their, their copyright information at the bottom or whatever. It, little bits and pieces. So to make it quick, Respect for the, the logo and where the logo shows up. Respect for your brand colors. If you're using, if you're creating a design that, that is focused on your brand colors, don't use off colors in the same design. What does that mean? If you have a, particularly, a particular gold color that's in your brand that you use, you, you shouldn't have like an off yellow, another type of yellow over here or similar gold, but not quite in the same thing. It looks messy and it, it doesn't look joint. It doesn't look as one. So keep the, the other thing is keep your, your brand colors, make sure you it, use it consistently. If you're using that yellow, use that yellow across. Don't, don't mix and match. Um, what else? Alignment, um, especially with blocks of copy, mm -hmm. you always want to pick yep. a space, a pick something that you're going to align it with. If you're going to align it with the edge of your logo, Make sure the line is right there and you can put the, the copy right up against it. So it, it reads, you know, professional. That's how we yeah. read in this, in this culture, left to right, top to bottom. That's how the narrative goes, you know, um, subconsciously, that's how our narrative goes. So we have to play on that, but also make sure enough to leave enough space so people can get to the, the relevant information quickly. Those are the real basics. It, it, it really, everything else is like a luxury. But those are the, the main things to pay attention to. Awesome. Awesome. Judith said this helps tremendously. Thank you, Chris. Great. Glad to help. Yes, yes, of course. So you said earlier, you mentioned a term that I'm not sure. Today was my first time ever hearing this term. So this is actually in line with your six talking points. So first, can you tell us what exactly is an armchair designer? And then what are your tips for dealing with them? Okay. Um, so an armchair designer is most entrepreneurs, like people, the, those people that we don't necessarily have the, the finances to hire someone to do it. But what we do have is 
our ingenuity and our ability to kind of pick things up and kind of run with it. Uh, we know in our minds how we want things to look. We may not have the, the experience of um, kind of paying attention to how things are laid out um, for, for other people to consume. So armchair designers are, are people that want to get their message out, but don't want to wait for someone else to design it for them or can't wait for someone to, to do that for them. So in order to make them more efficient, it's really just about learning the small, like the little tiny, it's not a lot of them, like um, design, things that make designs look professional. Mm -hmm. um, things that make design, people would assume that at the very least, you have a basic understanding of space and the things that I spoke about before, you have a basic understanding of space and alignment and um, color, color theory in some cases. Um, what else? Yeah, it, 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 it really isn't a lot of things. It's just, you know, like when you know, you know, yeah. it's, it's different. When you, when, you, when you know how something is done, it's easy to spot the people that don't know how the thing is done, Yeah. right? And, and as a designer, for me, I can spot these things almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And I, and uh, it's interesting that Kilo is on here because I, she also, at some time, she's even more of a design snob than I am because <laughs> she's just gotten used to seeing things you know, kind of laid out in a certain way. And I, I went through the, the, the process of explaining, okay, this is why we wouldn't bold this or put a drop shadow on everything. Mm -hmm. Like that, that, was, that was a thing back in like, the early 2000s, people put drop shadows on everything. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, so it's like those understanding how to use effects yeah. and when to use effects and, you know, making it more about the narrative and less about the bells and whistles. That's, that's the thing that changes the kind of the, you, you can mask your, your, your inexperience in design just by having those those little bits of understanding just those little bits of understanding it'll it'll completely change the game for most people awesome awesome um so guys we just ran through everything that you need to know about how to get the most out of your designer we've got chris richards here um and he is the official uh graphic designer for all tsp events um, if you're just hopping on right now my name is stephanie rounds i'm one of the executive coaches for the tsp mastermind and now we're going to, I'm going to Q&A really quick because we have a, a few comments down here. So I want to make sure we get um, through them all. So Damani is asking, Great. when we have uh, some creative assets, but not a full on brand identity, how can we develop the idea, feeling, et cetera? How can you develop the idea? Mm -hmm. Well, so when you, when you created the brand, I mean, if, if it's your brand, you know what the brand identity looks like because you're that brand. Like, you know, you know the emotion, you know how you want people to feel when they interact with your brand. You know how, you know, the, the when, like I've, I've always heard the term, when, when people are walking away, what's the, the impression that you want to leave as they're walking away? You know that already. Um, you might not be able to articulate it, which is different, but you have an understanding of it. So with that in mind, that's what you bring to your designer. Yeah. This is my brand. I, this, is, this is how I want people to feel when, they, when they, they see an ad that I do. I want them to feel cheery. I want them to feel like this is uh, like I'm bringing them the, the right solution. I want them to feel, you know, based on whatever industry you're in, that's the important bit. That's the bit, that's the, the piece that the designer needs. I mean, outside of the, you know, the, the content, that's what they actually need because that's where their job gets, that's where they get their job, get into their job. Yeah. Their job is to take your emotion and create something from that. So that's what you need to bring. Just be, be straightforward and go through the process. Talk about what it is that you, you want people to walk away with. It'll come, it'll, all that stuff will come out in the talk. Awesome, awesome. So when you were talking about the creative versus the designer, um, Andrea said, mm -hmm. so you need to understand the level of creative you're working with. So she agreed with your, um, with your thoughts there. Akilah said, great, dis again, with the creative and the designer, she said, great distinction, especially when interviewing potential design support. Um, 
Yep, Judith, respect for your brand at the core. Absolutely. Um, let's see, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. How the story reads depends on the design. Come through, Judith. Type in all the nuggets. Uh, let's see. So true, a message can look all kinds of crazy when there isn't enough white space and borders to give them uh, give the room for reading and understanding. That's from Akila. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, Damani said, thank you. Um, and also a brand is not just about your logo. You should be able to feel that a piece is from you based on the consistency of the look and feel, not the logo alone. Yes, Andrea, I love exactly. that. Yep. Uh, let's see. Sonia. Hi, Sonia. I don't know if you remember me, but we met at TSP Live. Um, she said, if you are in the middle of uh, things with your designer and you have discovered some of these challenges, how do you course correct? Um, it is time consuming, costly, and frustrating not understanding the roles of both parties. Now that we know okay. um, what is the next, or now that we know what is the next step to moving um, the current project forward and how do we execute? That's a great question. It's a great question. Um, <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a big talker. <laughs> I, I like to talk things out. So my suggestion would be to a, approach your designer, not from a um, project or a, you know, a, I need to, you to create this thing. I think what, my, what it sounds like the issue might be is that you need some level of um, understanding about each other. Maybe that designer doesn't quite understand your brand and what you do or how you do it. Um, what makes you in interesting in, in terms of your industry. Um, and they're having a hard time translating what you're telling them to what you're trying to execute. So in instances like that, I would say, come pre the, the, the same things we were talking about, come prepared, come with some ideas of what designs you like, and not necessarily from the standpoint of, I want you to copy this design, but this is a design that I like, here's why. Here's another design that I like. Here's why. And allow that designer to kind of look at the, the comparisons that you're giving them, mm. um, because this also is a part of their training. Uh, it's a part of their training to be able to pick apart designs and, and pull out the things that connect to you emotionally um, or, or to a viewer emotionally. So I would say come prepared with some ideas of great designs that you like not necessarily just great designs because you're like, wow, I'm impressed by this design, mm -hmm. but designs that are in line with your brand and in, in line with your industry. So you, you can have a talking point. You can say, hey, you know, the last time we did this, did, I, didn't, I, I couldn't get why you did it this way. Here's something that I think is a solution mm -hmm. for the next time, right? And have that designer, like, don't just hand it to them and be like, okay, now we're done. What are your thoughts? Like, how do you how do you relate what I'm telling you? And kind of take it from there. Because most times, most times I've found a lot of my 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 current clients were left from a, another designer and were so like frustrated. upset and, and yeah. couldn't deal with it all and frustrated that they came to me and just kind of dumped. It sounded like it felt I felt like a therapist. They kind of just yeah. dumped the whole thing of their whole experience with them and everything and a lot of times that's the, the, the thing that I see is that it's either an unwillingness or a, a sense of not feeling comfortable communicating how they feel because they don't think how they feel is relevant to the thing that they're creating, which is not the case. It's actually the complete opposite. How you feel is absolutely a huge part of the thing that you're creating and what you're trying to make other people feel by it. Awesome. Awesome. And then um, we have one last question and then we have something really special for you guys. So Andrea is asking, when you have a client who is adamant on incorporating a bad design principle in their brand, how do you handle that? Say it's something like a, a dated logo um, and they badly want it. What do you say to them? <clears throat> well, I, I voice it. I, I do the same thing. I, I, I'm, I'm upfront and I'm honest. And I say, look, I don't think this is the best, the best logo to place in here. Here's why. Um, and actually it's not just my preference. This mm -hmm. is, this is, a this is understood, tried and true. You have to trust my professionalism. You, you hired me for this position or you hired me for this part of your, your, your business to handle this part because of my expertise and because you don't know it. 
So if you don't know it, you're depending on me to help you with that. And I'm telling you that it's not a good look. The, the, maybe the difference for me is that I'll allow people to fall on their swords if that's what they want to do. Um, mm -hmm. and in the end, it's their brand. So if they're deciding this is important, who am I to tell them no? I, I'm, I'm just, I'm here to help. And if you don't want the help, the, I'm not going to force it down your throat. You know, you, you do what you do. Just understand, like I, I, there was a point early on in my, in my career where I had, this is, yeah, it's pretty early. I would put, especially with web designs, I would put just like a little thing in there so I knew it's mine, like a small thing that nobody could really see or find, but I know it's there and it's for me. Those type of clients where, where they're like, nah, that you're gonna, I just want, just do what I want, blah, blah, blah. I swiftly take those things off. It's no longer a Chris design or it's no longer, it doesn't feel like mine because it's not, it's not in line with my quality, the, the quality that I bring. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the only thing that you run the risk of as a client is alienating that designer. So if it's otherwise it's a great designer and you do that enough, they'll let you go. Like I did. I've done it many a times. Awesome. Awesome. Um, thank you for sharing that. Cause I know a lot of people <laughs> probably deal with that. Um, and also yeah. uh, one thing before we um, go to your treat for the audience, I just wanted to point out, like, I really loved how during this session you treated um, the relationship with the designer as like a collaboration, as opposed to like a project that you're giving someone. It really is mm -hmm. about, you know, talking with one another, creating that relationship, um, getting to know each other so that you know how to properly work together. So I love, love, love how you pointed that out. Um, so we are about to wrap. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. But before we go, Chris has something special for us. So Chris, why don't you go ahead and tell us about what you have for the audience? Sure. Um, I have two things that I, I wanted to offer. Um, one of them is a brand, co brand and design consult for a hundred bucks. Basically, what all it means is that I, you know, we can get on a, a Zoom chat and you can just show me your, the, all your designs, the, the designs that, that are surrounding your brand. And we can go through them. And you know, if you have some questions about one or you, you wanted to go in a different direction and you weren't sure how to voice it or you're, you just need work um, getting your design vocab up, um, we can do that you know, while we're going through and trying to, to pinpoint some issues that you may have. And also, give you a roadmap on a roadmap on how to fix it, how to, to, to solve that issue. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be with me. It's really just something for your own edification and you can take that back to your designer or whoever. Um, awesome. The other offer, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just saying awesome. Oh. Sounds good. I like that offer. Okay, great. Um, the other offer is, um, you know, since I'm part of the, um, Akila and I are part of the, the TSP mastermind, I wanted to, kind of give something that I know everybody's going to need and we're steady working on that now. Um, it'll be easier for me to do the design part than it is for Akila and I to work out the content. But um, that's what I'm offering. I'm offering to create a custom um, WordPress template for a sales page uh, um, based on the principles that we're learning here in um, TSP Mastermind. So since we're going through it with it, going through it as well, I, I get, you know, all the bits and pieces that we need to include in the sales page. I'll just help you make it look pretty, I guess, and pop and all those things. But also, um, but also it, it, it'll be a template that you can kind of use and just keep refurbishing or, you know, moving. And this is based on your, your design template. So most, most templates, modern templates have the ability to save your layout or save a layout. And that's what I would be proposing is to, to create a layout specific to your brand that you can kind of just go in and change out when you need to create one really quickly. And that one is for 350. So those are the two offers that I'm offering here today to my TSP fam. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. We did go ahead and drop that in the comments and it is pinned to the top. So if you would like to work with Chris based on everything that you've heard here and based off of the things that you've seen at the TSP events, um, and if you weren't at TSP Live, you missed something special because Chris designed like window cleans. We had like the <laughs> cylinders were wrapped, like everything. It was crazy and it was beautiful. Um, so thank you again for that because that was that really helped us kind of like level up the event. It just looked um, just.
so impressive. I love it. Yes, of course, of course. So we've dropped that link down in the comments. Make sure that you go ahead and head over there if you would like to work with Chris, if you wanna go ahead and get your brand together, um, click on that link and make sure that you're scheduling your console or getting your template. Um, And next week we have a special lunch and learn because it's actually gonna be a training with Lamar. So make sure that you are tuning into that. We're gonna start promoting that soon. Um, but make sure that you clear your calendar for next Tuesday at 12 o'clock. So again, my name is Stephanie Rollins. I am the uh, TSP executive coach for the TSP Mastermind, one of them at least. And today we had Chris Richards on, the TSP event designer. Make sure that you're tuning into the replay so that you can get all of these nuggets and go to that link at the top of the comments to work with Chris today. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next week.